Hello and welcome to Inside Iraq. I'm Jasmine Azawi. As Iraq gears up for a crucial election, the UN Special Envoy to Iraq, Ad Melkert, has warned of a Herculean task ahead. In August 2003, a powerful bomb destroyed the UN headquarters in Baghdad, killing 22 people, including Chief Envoy Sergio Vera de Mello. Six years on, violence is still ripping the country apart, and the time remaining for Iraqis to go to the polls is extremely short to ensure basic world election standard. So how tough is the challenge facing the UN in Iraq and its new chief envoy? And can the UN officials contribute to the development of Iraq in the long run? To discuss the role of the UN in Iraq, I'm delighted to welcome from Baghdad, Ad Melkert, special representative of the United Nations Secretary General for Iraq. Mr. Melkert, let me ask you a simple and a basic question. Some people, they might find it even silly, but I don't think so. Why would Iraqis should go to the polls? In what way will it help them to go to the polls? Because they've been going to the polls for the past six years, and their lives are just getting worse. Violence is rampant. Uh, corruption is all over the place. Basic services almost non-existent. So why should we put so much importance on this March election? Well, good to see you in the first place. I think it is really the, the crucial question that must be asked. Um, I do believe that in some ways uh, life has picked up uh, in Iraq. Uh, even security, uh, despite horrific bombings that have taken place. Uh, overall, I think that many Iraqis uh, have the sense that things have uh, turned a better way. In their daily lives, there's, much, there's still much to desire for, uh, education, health, water, work, employment, you name it. But the bottom line seems to me that uh, under almost any circumstances, people must have the possibility to express themselves, their preference, to know by whom they want to be represented and to send their representatives with a message. That is the, the core significance of elections, and more so, I would think, for people that uh, have uh, hardly ever in their history had that opportunity. And in that sense, these elections for many Iraqis, I'm, I'm quite sure that I speak for many of them, are extremely important. You have succeeded the Swedish envoy, Mr. Dimestur, and before that we all remember what happened to the late... Uh, Mr. Gemello and the, that powerful bomb in August 2003. Right now, you are the head of that special office regarding Iraq, so to speak. You had, if I'm not mistaken, you have a, a huge number of staff based in, in Jordan as well as in Kuwait as well as in Iraq. What preparations are you doing now to help the Iraqi uh, High Election Commission with the preparation for the March election? Well, fortunately, we, we have managed, uh, despite difficult circumstances, to have more and more UN people, internationals, but also national staff, uh, working uh, in and from uh, Iraq. You're right that our work with the Independent High Electoral Commission is uh, really a, a very crucial part of our work. Importantly, though, um, the International, the, the Commission, the Independent Commission, is really in charge. We as UN are there to advise, to support technically, to um, um, match uh, the organization of these elections with international standards so that they can be credible elections with a result acceptable to the Iraqis. And that is an interaction that is uh, very lively, very productive from my uh, end, and very fascinating. Mr. Melkert, you have been quoted as saying that the task ahead needs it's going to be a Herculean task. Exactly what do you mean? You are not prepared? You are not getting the cooperation from the Iraqis? Uh, the country is too large? Violence is rampant? Exactly what do you mean? No, we were very, <clears throat> very concerned uh, in uh, October uh, that the discussion in Parliament lasted and lasted for good reasons, because it was a good discussion, but, you know, at a certain moment you have to start preparing for the elections, which is a huge and complex undertaking. Um, so when then finally the law was adopted early November, 
there was not a lot of time left to the originally projected date around the 18th of January. And then I said, it's going to be an Herculean task. It still is. But uh, there is some more time now uh, with the date uh, finally set by the Presidency Council on the 7th of March. Um, I think that is still a very acceptable date because it is within the time limit for the current Parliament. At the same time, it offers a bit more um, time for preparation uh, by the Independent Commission and by the UN. So uh, the task is still big, but... Um, it's By and large, it's, it's on schedule. Yeah. How will you deal with the fraud? Because the history of election in Iraq since 2003 until now has been marred by fraud. And if anybody de is going to deny it, they are denying reality. B back in 2005, whole trucks and boxes came all the way from Iran with ballots, with boxes stuffed with ballots, and yet the results were accepted. So how are you going to deal with it? Well, I dare say that uh, Iraq 2010, in the organization of its parliamentary processes and its elections, is not anymore the Iraq of 2005. And there's one what key makes difference you sure? uh, between. Well, there's one key difference between the elections then and now. Now there is an established and accepted voter registration, which is extremely crucial in order to check votes cast on the basis of the uh, registration of, of voters and um, the organization is such that we believe there is a, a very strong technical basis for good elections however uh, is never the technical side that uh, in the end defines the outcome it's also the behavior of people um, and the organization more importantly the than organization, the behavior and the registration which is somehow based on the ration coupons, and the ration coupons comes from the Ministry of Trade. Each Iraqi gets uh, uh, per month a certain amount of food in order to tie them up simply because of the high unemployment. How, how can you make sure that the officials in these polling stations, they are going to be independent, that they are going to look after Iraq in general r rather than a specific party? Well, you know, the, the last two elections that we have seen, the provincial elections in January and the Kurdish uh, elections in uh, July, uh, were um, really held along generally acceptable standards. So a lot has been learned. Um, Parliament has decided uh, in the law that they want the, um, uh, the food distribution system as the um, basis uh, for the identification of voters, which is uh, generally accepted now. So I think that in that sense, the basis is there. IHEC on top of that uh, has uh, appointed many monitors. We're talking here more than 200,000 people that will be out to 50,000 voter stations to really uh, keep an eye. Those people have their political affiliations, but as we know also from other countries, that's often a great incentive to keep an eye on each other, that uh, nobody is uh, doing it uh, wrongly or fraudul fraudulently. So that's why um, there is an infrastructure in place that gives some basis for confidence, but still a lot has to be done, a lot has to be explained to voters, many people not being used to uh, the way to cast your vote and to not to be influenced yes. by others. And that's the work that's going to take place in the coming months. Needless